Good morning to you uh, all. Sorry. And um, I think that will possibly have made your heart beat a little bit faster and maybe um, made you um, your pulse race a little bit. Uh, that was the Melbourne Staff Band. And it is completely coincidental that we've got a bit of a um, Aussie theme going on this morning because we've got some visitors from Australia. And um, as I say, that was the Melbourne Staff Band. The usual checklist, have you got your Bible with you? You might want to get your songbook. I don't know. You will almost certainly need a piece of paper. And if you've printed off your handout, so much the better and a pen as well you'll need all of those so following on from the william tell overture apropos of nothing really um let's just now calm ourselves and take a deep breath and remind ourselves of who we are why we're here who it is we worship let's gather our hearts and minds and watch this there's nothing worth more that could ever come close nothing can compare you're a living Of 
your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Thanks, Lillian is going to pray with us. Thanks, Lillian. Lillian, I think you're on mute. Would you mind unmuting yourself, please? Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Shall we pray? We gather together in worship today, Lord, to praise and thank you for your unfailing love and presence in our lives for the daily reminder in your word that you will never fail us or forsake us. How we long to meet together in worship, to sing your praises from our hearts, but we find ourselves in our homes, alone, yet not alone, because your presence is with us. We give you thanks because we are able to worship in this way. May we never take it for granted, but seek in these moments to wait upon you. We think of those within our core fellowship who are unable to join us. May they know of our thoughts and prayers on their behalf. And those who need you in a special way, Lord, come to them in love. We pray for this time of uncertainty in our world because of the coronavirus. Lord, we may not understand or fully know the extent to what is really happening, but we know that you are a faithful God. Lord, help us to trust, to pray, to believe that all will be well and to remember that nothing is too big for you and nothing too small for your divine attention. So we now give ourselves in worship to God and pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Wake up, all of you. Mm. Wake, come. What are we doing? We're praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come. Your will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our one. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done.
Now we can leave this place. Now spread his word. That's a great video, isn't it? We watched it um, a few weeks ago. I don't know if you remember, well, probably a few months ago actually now. Um, but I thought it'd be really helpful for us today um, when we're thinking about rounding up this series of, um, look, of meetings where we've looked at the the book of Acts. Um, we're going to sing a song together. We'll leave you all on, on mute, but please do sing because it's fun and it, it, you know, it's just great to do that. It's good for us to sing. Um, a song that has been chosen very particularly for today, and it's the song, Lord, I lift your name on high. I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. But it's this next little bit that I particularly want you to notice. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debts to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. In other words, that's kind of like a precy of what Luke wrote in his gospel, in his first volume um, of the big work that he wrote. So, Lord, I lift your name on high. Let's do the actions. I know the Greenwoods would normally do the actions in spades, but they're going to play for us. So over to you, not the hallway, hallway quartet and um, we'll join in singing and let's do the actions as well. Thanks folks. <laughs> great thank you very much greenwood family um smashing to have you with us it really is um we are really blessed to have a group that can carry on playing for us in these coronavirus times um we're going to watch uh, a little video now it's only very short but this is something else that is very relevant to what we're going to be thinking about today here we go but I'm confused. The Holy Spirit came upon people in the Old Testament. The good kings of Israel, like Saul in the beginning, or like David, and the judges, whenever Israel needed help, they got power from the Holy Spirit. So, what's the difference? The difference is that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit gave power to certain people at certain times. That's right. It wasn't for everybody. And even some people who received the power of the Holy Spirit, like King Saul, had it taken away later on when they disobeyed. This is big. 
What Jesus was saying was that from now on, the Holy Spirit wasn't just for special people at special times. The Holy Spirit is for everyone who follows Jesus all the time. <gasps> That's huge. That's really huge. We all get power from the Holy Spirit. If we follow Jesus, we do. Good morning. It's great to see you all today. We're particularly pleased to see some visitors. You have already heard we've got some from Australia. So, good day. Um, we still have a number of people who are poorly. Margaret Bitch was taken to St Barnabas on Friday. Please continue to pray for her and for Frank. James Thomas obviously still needs our prayers. Let's remember him and Claire and the children and Daryl and Katrina too. There are others, of course, and we send our love to all of those who are unwell at this moment. Please keep on praying for each other and particularly the people we've mentioned. Some information about other dates, times and events. There's a great deal going on in the coming weeks and months, so please do listen and watch out for information. There is some information on the Facebook page about the big collection, which will be happening in a different way this year. Please take a look and consider whether there's anything you could do to support this appeal. Some ideas have already been forthcoming, so keep a watch there and also in the pastoral letter. This Tuesday will be number seven of our prayer course. Next weekend is our harvest weekend. On Saturday morning, there is a cake sale in Goring, specifically at this house, not in the house, but outside on the drive. And there are more details on Facebook. On Saturday afternoon, we would love to receive your harvest donations ready for the Christmas parcel project. Information is to be found in the weekly letter, which comes out on Tuesdays. If you don't already receive this, please let Marion know. The Territorial Congress will be happening over the weekend of the 24th and 25th of October, and there will be online events happening. Access information for these events will be in the weekly letter each week. Thank you for your continued financial giving to the core. Our music today is an upbeat piece of music and is very short, so you won't have long to reflect on your giving to God. And then Brian will lead us in our prayer time. Lord, we ask that you be with us and those in our community over these coming days and weeks as we all continue to face up to rapid change which brings with it uncertainty and concern. We think of those who face an uncertain future when it comes to their employment or those looking to start their career. We pray that you give them the strength to face up to the challenges that may lie ahead. We also pray for those... That we also pray for those at any level of education who may be struggling to know how this may unfold. We ask that they be assured that they remain in our thoughts and prayers. We ask in our prayers for your guidance to know how best to help those who may be struggling financially or in their relationships. We know and hear of many who may do not enjoy the best of health, both physical and mental. And we pray they do not suffer alone. And at the same time, we pray for the professionals whose vocation it is to provide both care and hope. As we witness on our streets, many remain homeless, and at this time we would normally be planning our part in a local night shelter. This is not possible this year, and we offer up our prayers to those not only without accommodation, but also those looking to make alternative arrangements for the homeless. Finally, we pray for the leaders within our church as they look for and plan ways to engage and connect with our community, both spiritually and physically. We recognize the willingness and commitment of those involved in re-establishing our char charity shop and contact center and pray for those benefiting, benefiting from this support. And now in the words of Paul to the Thessalonians, that our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. 
Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Brian. That was such a relevant prayer. Every single word of that carefully chosen and um, so, so pertinent to our situation today. Thank you for that. So today's meeting is all about concluding this series on um, the book of Acts. Um, I wonder if there's anybody that has been around for every single one. That would be amazing if you have been. Um, but if you have been, then we have got high expectations of you because we're going to have a little bit of a quiz on the book of Acts. So if you have got just any piece of paper, but particularly if you've got your um, handout on the second side, I have deliberately left some space there. I didn't deliberately leave it, that's a fib, but there is some space there. And um, you might wanna make sure you've got a pen or a pencil. I think there are 13 questions and it's gonna go at quite a speed. So you need to be quick to, to write down your answers to these questions as you watch this video. Good morning. In the spotlight today is Joseph Greenwood, a student from Goring. His speciality subject is the Acts of the Apostles. Let's have our first contender, please. Your name is? Joseph Greenwood. Your occupation? Professional student. And your chosen subject? The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles, the fifth book of the Bible telling the story of the first church. Here we go. In Acts chapter 1, the author refers to a previous book. To which book is he referring? Luke's Gospel. The book of Acts begins with Jesus promising his disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit. On what Jewish festival did the Holy Spirit come in fire and wind? Pentecost. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple to pray when a crippled man was being led out to beg at the beautiful gate. When he asked Peter for money, how did Peter reply? Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. Rise up and walk. In Acts, we read of the believers sharing their possessions. Joseph of Cyprus sold a field and gave the money to the apostles. His nickname was Barnabas. What does Barnabas mean? Son of encouragement. The apostles chose seven men to help with the distribution of food to the widows. Which of these seven men went on to become the first Christian martyr? Stephen. One of the witnesses to the stoning of Stephen was a Jew called Saul. What was he said to be doing when the stoning took place? Holding the coats. From which African country did the eunuch who met with Philip come from? Ethiopia. When Paul was blinded on the road to Damascus, having met with Jesus, what was the name of the disciple who came to him and restored his sight? Ananias. There were three converts who became the church in Philippi, a slave girl, Lydia the businesswoman, and who else? The Philippian jailer. When Paul was arrested amidst a riot in the temple of Jerusalem, the Roman guards mistook him for a terrorist. From which country? Egypt. Which Roman governor replaced Felix as governor of Caesarea? Festus. When Agrippa asked Paul if he was trying to persuade him to become a Christian in such a short time, Paul replied, I pray not only you, but all who are listening may become as I am. Except for what? My chains. The book ends with Paul. I started, so I'll finish. The book ends with Paul in a rented house under house arrest, doing what? Boldly and without hindrance. Um, proclaiming the good news about Jesus. No passes. You scored 13 points. Joseph is our winner today.
feel a little bit sorry for those oh. teddy bears because they never even got a look in, did they? He just walked away with that prize. Well done, Joseph. You're a bright boy. You'll go far in this world. I'm sure you will. How did the rest of you get on? Did anybody, probably didn't even have time to write down all the answers, did you? Um, I hope you did know the answers to at least some of those. I'll be quite honest with you. Um, I got the idea for doing that. Somebody had sent a message, I don't know if you all saw it, saying um, this is a great idea. I claim no credit for this. Um, I saw th this idea being done on another cause um, Zoom meeting um, uh, two or three weeks ago, Romford Court, and it was um, Majors Mark and Julia Cousins who did it, and they were the ones that came up with the, the idea and, and presented it, and I, I did ask them. I pinched their idea. That was great, and well done, Joseph. I have to say, when I first saw Romford Cause video, I didn't know quite all the answers. I knew most of them, and I could have had a guess at one or two, but there were at least two questions I really wouldn't have known the answer to. So well done if you got more than half. <laughs> that was really good. So what's the point of that? Well, obviously, um, it's not an end of term quiz. I mean, really, it isn't. But actually, I wonder how much of the story of ACT you, you've taken in over these last few weeks. Um, and my question, really, that the, the big question for this morning is simply this. Today is our last in this series where we're looking at the Book of Acts, where we've been looking at the Book of Acts. Is that the end of the Acts of the Apostles? Is that the end? Bibles. Luke chapter one, first of all. So we know, because we looked at this a while back, we know that the book of Acts was written by Luke, who also wrote the Gospel of Luke. So let's just turn, if you've got your Bible there, let's just turn to the beginning of Luke's Gospel. So chapter one and the very first verse, Luke chapter one, he writes this. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses, that's a key word, were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Therefore, since I myself, says Luke, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Now, remember, Luke was a doctor, a scientist. OK, so that resonates, doesn't it, with that thing of hang on a minute. Let me look at the facts. I want to work this out properly. Let's just see where we're at with this. OK, I've investigated all right, so then we're not going to read the whole of Luke's gospel, but if you turn to the starting at verse 50, you remember the song we sang before where it spoke about um, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. That's a reference to Jesus' ascension. Luke chapter 24, verse 50, when he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. All right, so now turn to Acts chapter 1 and verse 1. And Luke, the same Luke, writes, in my former book, Theophilus, the gospel I wrote, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles. There's another key word there. 
he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. Remember, this is being written by a scientist, somebody that would want some evidence, some proof. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. And then he goes on to, to tell more stuff. And then, let that, then let's look at the end of the book of Acts. So this is Acts chapter 28 and verse 30. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him boldly and without hindrance. Remember that was one of the questions? Joseph had to kind of think about it for a minute, didn't he? But then he remembered boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. So we've had this incredible book, that the Gospel of St. Luke. Um, we've had that incredible book with all the um, accounts of all the different things that Jesus did in his life on earth. And then we've had this second volume where Luke is telling us about all the things not so much that Jesus did, although of course Jesus was very much a part of it all, um, but about what the apostles did, the acts of the apostles, what they did. Um, I, I always am um, reminded of that uh, children's book, What Katie Did. Luke's gospel, gospel could be called What Jesus Did. The acts of the apostles is what they did, what the apostles did did it's an incredible book think about some of the things the episodes that we've looked at over these last months adventures we've called them adventures many many times there have been escapes from prison and been all sorts of things going on the acts of the apostles and then it ends really suddenly Paul boldly he preached about God preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a very abrupt ending, isn't it? Is it an ending? I'm not sure it is really. Let's just ask ourselves a couple of questions. So first of all, I'm referring back to Luke's gospel here and Luke chapter one. What did Luke say his plan was? He said, since I myself have carefully investigated everything, I'm going to write this orderly account for you. Did he do what he set out to do? Yes, he did. He did. We've been working our way through Acts for quite some time now. And we're all quite familiar with big chunks of the book of Luke, uh, the gospel of Luke. So, yeah, I think Luke did do what he set out to do. Now, we started off in Acts way back at the beginning of May. I think it was the second Sunday in May that we started this journey through Acts. Um, we kind of followed on from Easter and the post-resurrection episodes in the Gospels. It seemed a sort of natural progression to do that, didn't it, really? Pentecost, and then we just kept going. And now we've finished. We've not read every single word in our meetings. We've not referred to every single episode. We haven't been able to. It would have taken us probably twice as long if we'd done that. But I hope at some point along this journey, you've read the whole book of Acts. And if you haven't, or actually, even if you have, why not have another go at reading it this week? It really is not that long a book to read in one go. Honestly, it isn't. So we've now finished looking at Acts. It's the end. It's the longest sermon series that I've ever preached. I don't know about um, any anybody else here who, who's preached sermon series, but it's certainly the longest one I've ever done. But is that the end of the Acts of the Apostles? Take off the capital letter A's for Acts and Apostles and hear that question again. Is that the end of the 
Acts, small a, of the apostles, small a. No, it absolutely is not. Those acts, those things that we Christians do because of our faith in Jesus, they're still happening. They're still happening in the life of our cause and our churches, whether we're in Australia or Worthing or um, Romford or wherever we might be. Those acts of the apostles are still happening in the lives of all Christians all over the world. And in our lives, we as individuals, the acts of the apostles are clearly not finished. But you may be thinking, I'm not an apostle. No one's ever going to write a book about the things that I've done. So that leads me to ask, who, what are apostles? Well, in the very early church, the very early church, they were considered to have been three things. A, <coughs> excuse me, they were considered to have been A, personally called by Christ, B, taught by him directly for several years, and C, to have seen Jesus alive after his resurrection. So, was Paul even an apostle? So, was he personally called by Christ? Was he taught by him directly? Did he see Jesus alive after his resurrection? Well, Paul himself clearly considered himself to be an apostle. He writes about that. And actually, he does fulfill all three requirements. You couldn't possibly say that in that dramatic conversion story, that dramatic encounter on the Damascus Road, you couldn't possibly say that Paul wasn't personally called by Christ. You couldn't possibly say that he wasn't taught by him directly through God's word. And you couldn't possibly say that Paul didn't see Jesus alive after his resurrection. He fulfilled all three requirements. And here's the thing. We are all called to be apostles too. We have all been personally called by Christ. We too have been taught by him in his word. We too have seen or at least encountered Jesus alive after his resurrection. So yes, we fulfill all three requirements too. We have met with Jesus. We've done it many times, some of us. And even if you've only met Jesus or feel that you've only met Jesus once, well, I'm pretty sure you're gonna meet with him again before you're done. So I ask my question again. Is that the end of the Acts of the Apostles? I think you know my answer to that question. What's your answer? Let's pray. And so, Father God, we thank you for the way in which you have spoken to us um, over these weeks through your word and through this book in particular. We thank you because of that man, Luke, who saw, who understood, who grasped something of the enormity of what he was witnessing. And we thank you for his faithfulness to your calling in writing that down so that Theophilus would be convinced, but so that we have the evidence too so that we have the opportunity of making up our own minds about you and about your claims upon our lives. And so, Father God, as we conclude this series, this episode in our lives, where we've looked again at the book of Acts, we ask you, will you come and meet with us again, whether it's for the first time 
or the 101st time? Will you come and meet with us again and allow us to have yet another encounter with you, the risen Jesus, so that we may know the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, working through us, so that we continue to be your apostles and we continue to carry out your mission in the places where we live and move and have our being. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your voice speaking to us through it. And we ask you simply now, will you help us please to continue to be your apostles? And we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our last song this morning, When I Was Lost. When was that for you? Do you still sometimes feel as though you're lost? Might this be your first encounter? Or do you feel that maybe you're not lost anymore? You've been found by Jesus. But if you're anything like me, you just kind of wander off every now and again and have to come back or be brought back by Jesus and his love. Well, whatever your experience, when I was lost, you, Jesus, came and rescued me, reached down into the pit and lifted me up out of it. It's a great song. There is a new song in my mouth. There is a deep cry in my heart, a hymn of praise to almighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Greenwood family. Um, we'll sing. We'll probably still leave you on mute, but let's all sing anyway. And um, make this our experience. If it isn't your experience yet and you want to you want to encounter Jesus, perhaps for the first time, then reach out to somebody. Reach out to me. You can contact me um, via email, via um, Facebook, all those kinds of usual things. Reach out and find out how you can make that encounter with Jesus a real thing for you today. Thank you, Hallway Quartet.
great. Thanks very much, Greenwood family. Smashing, smashing playing there. Really, really good. Thank you. Now, on your handout, um, you've got a little couplet near the end of the second page. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And in a moment, I'd like you to join in with the response in the name of Christ. Amen. So perhaps you'd like to all unmute yourselves for this bit um, so that you're ready um, for that. Our sort of sending out prayer today um, is based on some words from Joel, the Old Testament book of Joel and Acts chapter 2. And you'll recognise that really clearly, I think. Go out into the world and labour to bring forth new life. Dream dreams, pursue visions and speak of God's goodness in the words of those who would hear. And may the God who breathed life into creation be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to your dreaming. And may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in of, the Christ. name of Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you all. So thank you, everyone, for being with us this morning. Um, a particular thank you to everyone who's taken part. And um, thank you to those who've helped behind the scenes. Um, what we normally do now is just have a 30 second pause while we all go and grab our coffees and things. And then we'll come back and have a chat. So thanks very much. I will see you in just a moment. Oh, I wish. I don't wish.